Hi, my name is Will. We're here at the Relativistic Heavy Ion Collider, or RIC for short. It's an amazing machine that allows scientists to see what atoms are made up of. We know that atoms make up all the matter around us, but there's still much to learn about what makes up atoms. Rick takes atoms without their electrons, now called ions, and smashes them into each other to find out what's inside. Scientists study these ion collisions to learn what the early universe was like and how atoms make up all the matter we see in the universe today. Rick collides two beams of ions head on while they're traveling at close to the speed of light. The particles actually start their travel far from the collider and travel through a couple of smaller accelerators. They get faster and faster until they are injected into Rick, where the beams of ions go in opposite directions around the larger ring. At top speed, the ions can circulate in Rick for up to 24 hours. For most experiments, Rick uses ions of gold, but it can also collide other types of ions too. It can also use single polarized protons, which is important for understanding proton spin, a property used in MRI scans, but something that scientists don't fully understand yet. Results from Rick experiments show that the early universe was like a super hot soup of matter. This matter is called the quark gluon plasma, and it's about 250,000 times hotter than the center of the sun. Special magnets called superconducting magnets steer the ions traveling around the ring. Let's go take a look at one. Here we have one of the Rick magnets. There are 1,740 of these throughout Rick. Ions travel through the beam pipe at the center of these superconducting magnets, which have to be kept very, very cold. These are chilled by 25 tons of helium to reach negative 452 degrees Fahrenheit. That's almost as cold as anything can get, around 4.5 Kelvin. Inside this magnet, you see a cross section of the beam pipe where the ions travel. The beam pipe is kept under vacuum, so that way there's no other way particles or gases can interfere with the particles that the scientists want to see collide. It's also surrounded by coils of superconducting wire that can conduct lots of electricity without losing energy, and that allows the magnets to carry large current and create a very strong magnetic field to steer the ions around the ring. The superconducting wires are surrounded by insulation, and there's also space for the helium to get piped in and out to keep everything very, very cold. So let's see where the super cold liquid helium is pumped into Rick's magnets. Come on, let's go. Now we're inside one of the largest single refrigeration plants in the world. Just like your home refrigerator keeps your food cold, this refrigeration room keeps the Rick magnets cold and superconducting. Both systems use a chilled liquid to take away the heat. At Rick, we use super cold liquid helium the helium to cool the magnets is stored in 47 large tanks. Cold helium gets pumped through the magnets that make up the two Rick rings and takes away heat from them to keep them cold. Then it returns it to the refrigeration room warmer than before and 26 compressors make it super cold again. The heat that's removed in this part of the process goes to the cooling tower and the rechilled helium is sent back to cool the magnets even further. Directly underneath this building is the collider tunnel where the particles speed around in the magnet rings. To get collisions, Rick is two accelerators in one. Each one is made up of those long superconducting magnets strung end to end like beads on a necklace. At various places around the ring, physicists steer both beams into a single beam pipe so the particle beams can collide. Huge detectors surround this interaction area and record signals that tell what kind of particles come out of the ion collisions. The signals that the detectors pick up provide physicists with information about the conditions created in the particle collisions. Let's go look at where one of those detectors is located. Here we're at Rick Star Experiment. Behind me is the shield blocks, and behind the shield blocks is a 1,200 ton magnet detector for STARS experiments. It's about as large as a three-story house. STAR specializes in tracking the thousands of particles produced by each ion collision in RIC. It looks for signatures of that quark gluon plasma. RIC detectors have picked up signals that tell us not only is super hot quark gluon plasma created during the ion collisions, but that matter also has no viscosity or resistance to flow 
it is technically a perfect liquid. Scientists have also observed that gluons play an important role in proton spin. Another large detector, Phoenix, is now being transformed into a new detector named S-Phoenix. It will be able to study some of the most intriguing particles that are created in RIC collisions. Nuclear theorists continually refine their calculations to help make sense of the data and compare the experimental results with physicists' expectations. But there are still many questions about the nature of this matter, and S-Phoenix will help answer them. So here we are in the building with the main control room. Behind me is a mural of one of the smaller accelerators, the AGS, Alternating Gradient Synchrotron. Operators such as myself make sure that all of these smaller accelerators and systems are running correctly. And from here, physicists can also steer particles to facilities that explore the effects of space radiation so we can help protect future astronauts. And to make important isotopes for diagnosing and treating diseases like cancer. All of these programs will continue to move forward as Rick begins to finish up its experimental program. In the near future, a major collaborative effort will transform some of Rick's components into a brand new nuclear physics research facility, an electron ion collider, or as we like to call it, the EIC. It will be two intersecting accelerators, one with a beam of electrons, the other with a beam of protons or heavy ions. It will be able to produce three-dimensional snapshots of the internal structure of the protons and ions. Like RIC, the EIC will be funded by the federal government through the Department of Energy's Office of Science and will draw on expertise from throughout the DOE National Laboratory Complex and at universities and research institutions around the world. EIC partners will include the Thomas Jefferson National Accelerator Facility, Jefferson Lab, in Newport News, Virginia, as well as nearby Stony Brook University and other international participants. We look forward to serving the worldwide EIC user community, already more than a thousand scientists from 30 nations. We hope you'll come back to learn more about our progress and discoveries as we enter this next frontier.